Welcome to another international relations capsule for the Shankar Academy. Today we thought we'll discuss the BRICS summit, which is going to take place in Delhi on September the 9th. We are somewhat fatigued by the news from Afghanistan, and I thought we might change the subject, even though the only international development these days, they all rotate around developments in Afghanistan. BRICS, as you all know, is an organization of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And the next summit, which is the 13th summit of this organization will of course, be held virtually in Delhi with our Prime Minister in the chair. If you look at the composition of this group, you will be surprised as to what is common among them. When you have smaller organizations other than the United Nations, they always have some kind of a glue which bring them together. Mostly they are regional countries of a particular region who have common interests, common levels of development, and common aspirations. That is how the, these groups began to be formed. So we know the most successful regional groups like European Union, ASEAN, and several others, particularly, particularly every region has a regional grouping. We ourselves have our own SARC, which of course not very active these days. But so every region has aspired to develop their own organizations. And this is something which is uh, prescribed in the United Nations Charter, because everything cannot be dealt with by the UN itself. So some of the problems can be resolved locally, that is one reason, regionally. And the other is there can be economic cooperation among these countries, which should be mutually helpful. Then, of course, there have been the blocs, military blocs, who are bound by ideology, whether you are thinking of NATO or you think of Warsaw Pact. So there it is the ideology and security that bring them together. But these five countries, if you analyze it and see what is common among them, you will wonder. Because Russia, China on the one hand, highly developed countries. And then you have India, Brazil, and South Africa. In fact, there was already an organization comprising of Brazil, India, and South Africa. And uh, this was because these are the bigger developing countries. But the idea of these five countries being clubbed together came from the Goldman Sachs uh, consulting company in the United States. And its economist called John O'Neill. He is the one who first wrote about the possibility, not only not of uh, BRICS, but BRIC, because he had not included South Africa in that. And why Goldman Sachs? Because they keep looking at possibilities of investments abroad and the likelihood of growth of countries, development, and their needs and to advise their clients about investments in various parts of the world. So Mr. O'Neill suggested that Brazil, Russia, India, and China had the biggest potential for growth. Because we are talking about uh, uh, 2001, 2002, that period. And without thinking that this would eventually become a regional organization, he suggested this and did its various studies, which were followed by investors. And some of these countries began exploring investment in, in, in uh, these countries. And this gave them an idea that these countries themselves 
that this could be a grouping. So we might be able to marshal resources together, work together, even though ideologically they had no blue, they were not the same at all. Uh, democratic countries, China, Russia, of course, South Africa, Brazil. So all these countries did not have a particular profile, shall we say. They're all very different. But this idea that they are getting together can promote cooperation among these countries. Sparked off this idea of an organization called BRIC, B-R-I-C it was. And South Africa joined later because South Africa was already cooperating with India and Brazil. And therefore, in the new group also, South Africa was uh, invited to join. And that is how uh, BRIC and they became BRICS and became a rather important organization. But everybody wondered as to why this was becoming an organization. And just as we were reluctant about joining quadrilateral initially, for fear that quadrilateral will be seen as something against China, many people thought that BRICS might become a counter to the United States. Because if the major countries are in one group and the United States is not there. So there was a suspicion that this could become an anti-US grouping because of the various aspects of these countries. Russia, of course, has been in Cold War with the United States. China has lots of problems with the United States. And China wants to change the international system, particularly the financial system, uh, to change it from Bretton Woods institutions to something else. So they had that aspiration also in mind. So when this grouping was formed, India was a bit reluctant. Uh, Brazil was a bit reluctant also, etc. But then finally the compulsion of or the ideas that had emerged from Goldman Sachs encouraged them to try out a group like this. And the first group meeting of this group was held in July 2006 at the foreign minister's level. Even at that time, uh, the idea was somewhat uh, tentative. They were looking at uh, ideas like uh, cooperation among themselves and not to appear to be reforming the world or challenging the existing system. But gradually and slowly, China became a predominant member of this group. And China's idea was exactly to challenge the United States, particularly on financial institutions, because they had felt for some time that the World Bank IMF systems were not very friendly to developing countries. And they had this idea, though they did not reveal at that time, was to perhaps create a kind of counter to the World Bank and uh, giving loans to the, to the developing countries themselves and therefore act as some kind of a counter to World Bank and IMF. Of course, it is not very easy to do because that is a globally established institutions uh, connected to the United Nations. But everybody knows that the World Bank and IMF are run by the people who contribute. They're not democratic organizations. Decisions are taken on the basis of the weighted votes that the countries have, and the biggest contributor takes the biggest decisions. So there's a certain amount of disparity among the members and the benefits that they get. So generally, there is a certain dissatisfaction about the way World Bank and IMF work, but then it is run by the contributors. So there is nothing that uh, we could all be members, but the vote is on the, in favor of those who pay more. It's not like the United Nations. In the United Nations, everybody has one vote, whether you are uh, uh, paying a large contribution or a smaller contribution, because the contributions are fixed on the basis of capacity to pay. But here in the World Bank and IMF, no, this is on based on contributions. And on that basis, the biggest contributors always decide uh, what should happen. And when an organization like that comes, they of course try to 
figure out an agenda. And when there are parallel organizations of this kind, like for example, United Nations has a certain agenda. Parallelly, you have a commonwealth, you know, countries, not the old United Nations, but those countries who were once colonies of the, of the UK. So they try to they make an agenda which is different from the United, United Nations. But in the end, you will find that there will be so much of duplication, whether it is uh, environmental issues, whether it is decolonization issues, uh, racialist issues. So all these become parallel, duplicating the work of the other countries. But then the Commonwealth, for example, started saying that we have many small countries, small is beautiful, so all these small countries. So they started dealing with uh, problems of small countries, small island states. Uh, then they started thinking about the race issues in countries. And so they also you know, kept an agenda which is slightly different from the United Nations, but still more or less it is the same. It's always security concerns, development concerns, collaboration concerns, etc. So as uh, BRICS started moving very slowly, I think the things took, because of the suspicion as to whether all these five can work together what kind of platform they will have, etc. It took uh, time. And three years later, in, um, on 16th of June 2009, the summit was held with the prime ministers or presidents uh, present there. And it started taking off an agenda. And to be expected, uh, the three things that they picked up uh, where political and security, because it is discussed by everybody, every organization. Then economic and financial responsibilities and capabilities of these countries. Then cultural and people-to-people -people contact. So nothing surprising in these three pillars, as it were, uh, that um, uh, they adopted. And uh, at every summit, discussions are held, uh, papers are prepared, uh, studies are made, and slowly and steadily, BRICS has taken some shape. But the problem with these organizations is that when the global situation changes, their relevance also changes. And the capabilities that they had at one point may reduce at a later stage. In certain cases, it will increase. So the examples about BRICS, if you look at it, you will find that India, of course, has remained steady, one of the fast developing nations. Brazil was doing extremely well. But if you look at Brazil now, particularly because they have a president who calls himself the second Donald Trump, there are very many faulty decisions, problems, environmental degradation, damage, and of course the pandemic. So all put together, Brazil has taken a rather low position in the, on the world stage. Uh, Russia was once a superpower, so they have ambitions to uh, dominate any, any grouping. So they took uh, some initiatives. But China outshone all of them. South Africa, of course, in terms of uh, population in terms of importance, the only country in Africa had its own importance, but there have been many internal uh, problems there and, um, you know, corruption cases and so many. So South Africa is also not doing extremely well. So the judgment that was made long ago by Goldman Sachs that all these would be the fast growing, large developing countries, which will assume importance in the world very soon, that disappeared after some time. By then we had already made an organization, the organization was on. But the original vision of Goldman Sachs that investment will flow to these five countries, that changed. And in fact, Goldman Sachs dropped the idea of promoting um, BRICS as a, an investment destination. Although there are many countries who had gone to these countries and we had also picked up uh, 
direct foreign investment in these countries. But the kind of growth that uh, was envisaged at the time of the first conference changed. And if you look at it today, when we have the summit meeting in Delhi, all these five countries have different persona, as it were. They're all different from what they were at the time. And their interrelationships have also changed. Well, we'll come to the summit later. But so what really happened was that China completely dominated BRICS because they had the money to invest. Uh, a BRICS bank was established. So much of the money for the BRICS bank came from China. Also, BRICS established uh, some loan facilities to member countries. There again, China was the one which did not need it. Other countries needed it. So the BRICS bank was actually established in, in China, even though the CEO was an Indian. So the usual frustrations of multilateral uh, arrangements where you know you had to divide uh, benefits and share the responsibilities, etc. So, but so today, the BRICS is just a shadow of what it was when it was established. But you know these institutions have their own dynamics, their own um, you know staff. People have to continue working on them, and therefore uh, the organization goes on. Often there is talk about reform, talk of changing the agenda, making it more effective, not to challenge the Bretton Woods system in a formal manner. All these trends are there. And the next summit will, of course, uh, reflect all these uh, thoughts within the organization. But uh, in, in terms of importance of the membership of the organization, we should not forget that among these five countries, they have 42% of the world population. So it's a large segment, almost half the population of the world in BRICS. Then 30% of the land area, again, a big chunk, and 24% of global GDP. GDP is lower because uh, all these countries are not as prosperous as the developed countries. So within this uh, setup, several efforts were made. The first effort was to make this as a bridge between the North and the South. You know the expression, the North is the more developed regions of the world and the South is the developing country. So somehow it is a, geographically it has come about like that. All the rich countries are in the North of the equator and the poorer countries are in the South of the equator with some exceptions of course. And uh, North-South uh, cooperation and dialogue were promoted by the United Nations and other agencies. So one ready agenda was because we said the North and the South included, there should be a bridge between the two. And uh, even though the capabilities of the countries were different, Russia and China in one, on one side and uh, Brazil, India and uh, South Africa on the other, there could be cooperation in whatever way they can. Then, as I mentioned earlier, the other activity that the Chinese took over was a reform of the multilateral financial institutions uh, to try and rectify the disadvantages in World Bank and IMF. So they wanted these countries, particularly China, wanted the control, central role on this in the for the emerging markets, because we are the emerging markets, not the industrialized nations. So we, we felt, the organization felt that uh, it should be, have a bigger role, because it is still to come. And so a new development bank was established and contingency reserve arrangement for the countries to use financing in certain situations. And the latest that they have um, taken over as an activity is uh, vaccine development, because the United Nations did not do that. 
And if they had done that, there would have been better advantage. There was no international coordination. So with 42% of the population reflected in the uh, BRICS, perhaps BRICS could uh, make a big contribution. And that will probably be discussed in Delhi. And uh, the Chinese president, Chinese foreign minister said, I think today or yesterday, that one of the other topics they will discuss in Delhi is Afghanistan. Because if these leaders meet, the foremost thing in their mind will be Afghanistan. And I, I suspect that much of the time in Delhi will be taken over by Afghanistan because the situation has not stabilized. And all these countries are very anxious. But we are all in different sides of the conflict in the sense that Russia and China are closer. Earlier, Russia was the most uh, concerned about Afghanistan, but now China is planning to get there with Pakistan and Taliban. So Afghanistan may be discussed, but uh, interests will be different. Uh, the only common interest will be, of course, to have a composite government in Afghanistan and a moderate policy on the Afghan side and also investment and development, etc. These are common. But who will have the prime involvement in Afghanistan will be something which will be in dispute. And what are the challenges now before this uh, organization? First of all, China's aggression in uh, Ladakh has changed the nature of our relationship with China. So just as we you know, moved out or distanced ourselves from SARC because of trouble with Pakistan and Pakistan raising Kashmir issue in every meeting, we got a bit fed up by SARC discussions on the subject. Anywhere and everywhere there is a meeting, Pakistan will raise the Kashmir issue. Even though there was understanding at the very beginning that uh, bilateral issues will not be discussed. But who can prevent the head of government if he decides to make a speech on Kashmir? And so that is the reason why I think we distance ourselves from SARC. And uh, we seem to promote now the other organization called BIMSTEC, in which Pakistan is not there, but otherwise many countries of the region are, are there. So because of this low point in relations between China and India, uh, this idea of uh, cooperation in, inside BRICS also is in danger. Then the relations between China and Russia, as I mentioned, it has uh, changed. Now they seem to be working together. So they might band together, they might stay together in this BRICS also and create some stumbling blocks for uh, India and the others. Then, as I mentioned, South Africa's internal problems, Brazil's internal problems are very serious, particularly on the pandemic. Brazil is probably one of the worst affected countries because uh, President Bolsonaro adopted uh, an unconventional, unscientific approach like uh, President Trump did and brought chaos for this country. And uh, this was a very good and developing, I mean, fast developing country. People used to say there are three worlds in Brazil, first world, second world, and third world, all in one country. But now the situation has changed. There are more serious problems. And then, of course, China's image has been tarnished because of their recent activities, not only in Ladakh, but also in South China Sea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the hetero heterogeneity of the organization, the diversity of BRICS was there already even at started, but now it has become more evident. And um, there are very few issues on which they are able to work together. Uh, you know, climate change, can be one issue on which there could be agreement based on the Paris Agreement. Uh, but we know from recent developments that the Paris Agreement is not very effective. 
and the different countries have different ideas of declaring zero carbon by a particular year. That is now the fashionable thing to do. But whether these five countries will stick together, India has kept out of it. China has declared 2050. United States has declared 2030, et cetera, et cetera, for carbon-free carbon countries to become carbon-free. Uh, but um, on, on this, an agreement is not easy among the five, five countries, but this will be a, a topic for discussion. Then bal balancing trade with China is an issue for all of us, India mostly, but others also, you know, they all sell more to in these countries than buy. Then new glo global model of governance are coming up in different parts of the world. And here again, there is no balance among the views of these uh, five countries. And the um, uh, South has benefited uh, in certain ways because of the, of the new, new governance style, because democracy is uh, becoming rare. And also there is a support for democracies emerging from different quarters. So I, I believe, and this will, we will know in the next few days, that one of the priorities of uh, uh, BRICS will be India's own priority or developing multilateralism. Because during Trump's days, multilateralism and globalization were all given up. And uh, people were all on their own. And uh, that is why the world suffered most under the pandemic. Because there could not be uh, joint activities. So multilateralism is something that we would like to be strengthened. And that will, of course, include the United Nations and other regional organizations, of course, including World Bank, IMF, and WTO. So these are priorities which may uh, come up uh, for discussion. As far as multilateralism is concerned, uh, reform of the United Nations is important. And as you can see, two are already permanent members of the uh, Security Council. And the other three are all aspirants, uh, Brazil, India, and South Africa. Of course, Brazil and India are already declared candidates for permanent members. South Africa is unable to do that because there is no agreement in the African group. Well, there are other candidates from Africa like uh, Egypt and Nigeria. And therefore, Africa is unable to decide on one particular country. So Europe is more or less understood it will be Germany. India is more or less understood it should be, sorry, Asia should be India. And uh, Brazil should be uh, from Latin America. But on South Africa, there is no clear. This doesn't mean any of them have been accepted by anybody. In fact, there is no support, absolute support for any of them. Because uh, only, it's, uh, only a uh, package deal can be worked out. Individual countries cannot be admitted as permanent members. This was tried by the United States at one time, just make Germany and uh, Japan permanent members and leave out all the rest. So that will not be accepted. So there is no consensus, even in this group, about what the reform process should be. Terrorism, there is, of course, an agreement among all of them. Pakistan is not there, so there is no terrorist uh, sponsoring country in the group. China has terrorist issues. Russia has terrorist issues. We have major issues. South Africa has and Brazil has. So it is quite possible for us to work out some common strategy to fight against uh, terrorism. Another area where we could uh, work together is the promoting of technological and digital solutions, because some of them have advanced technology and that will be very, very useful. So we can expect that all these issues will be uh, discussed and uh, there will be an agreed statement where all these things be touched because that will be only the common denominators, the common lowest denominator only will be reflected in the statements. Uh, but even though it is a virtual summit and not the, the leaders will not be physically present, the very fact that these five countries will be discussing these issues 
starting from Afghanistan to technology to UN reform, etc. Whether it is BRICS or not, these countries are independent in themselves and they have ideas. And it will be very useful to have a kind of uh, agreement. But the future of BRICS will depend on what emerges out of all this. And it will be too early to say whether a common agenda and a common progress can be registered in Delhi. So certainly, our Prime Minister, as the Chair, will try to bring about conciliation and try to promote the interests of developing countries. Uh, but of course, China's peculiar situation inside this group will have its own tensions. And um, although they are not physically there, seeing President of China and Prime Minister of India in a group like this will look a bit odd in the present uh, uh, circumstances. So, um, I think the very many ideas that have been floated and started by BRICS not progressing as much as we had expected for the reasons that we uh, listed. Uh, but once an organization is created, people will try to readjust agendas, understand each other, and try to come to common positions. So don't be surprised if there is a common position on some of these issues, and um, or at least some common factors can be identified. And therefore, uh, the uh, BRIC summit may be a success. Because um, the original idea of these countries are the countries which will maintain sustained uh, economic growth, particularly double digit growth was one of the factors. But then that is not attainable. But still, uh, some kind of sustainable growth will come, definitely be uh, tried and some strategy for this and also cooperation among these countries is probably about this. So many of these groups, some of the groups have become defunct. As you know, there are, there is, it comes up formally once in a while, but they don't have that kind of energy. Sark is a good example of that. So in my view, unless it is thoroughly reformed and unless these countries evolve towards the direction in which this, these countries were at the time of the invention of BRICS, BRICS is not going to play a big role as an organization. But certainly these five countries have an important role to play and their getting together in Delhi will certainly lead to some activities at the international level by all these countries. That's all that we can expect. No dramatic results can be expected because of the very diversity. And also because its own, the country, the performance of these countries has also dwindled in the past. So they have to recover that, greater balance in the organization. China must also adjust itself to the other countries and all these factors remain unknown. But certainly, no summit ever fails. There will always be a, a compromise. Some cover-up will always be there. And therefore, we can expect some declaration which will be hailed as a new vision uh, for uh, BRICS. And there are these very important leaders there. And there will be that compulsion to provide a vision. And that we can expect. Thank you very much. Well, if it has not become like that already, it is only because of India. Because what we have to remember is the United States, Australia, and Japan are already a military alliance. So they have no problem saying that there's an alliance, we want to contain China, etc. But without India, Indian Ocean without India will be like a Hamlet without the Prince of Denmark. <laughs> so India has to be there, then only it can be a powerful force, even if the intention is to contain China or to increase cooperation with China, whatever. So India is an indispensable part. But we have this allergy towards, you know, joining an, a military alliance of any kind. And we have repeatedly said that there's not a military alliance. But in our thinking also, there has been a change after 
the pandemic as well as the Chinese incursion. Uh, because uh, if you look around the world, you will find that, uh, and also the China, China's aggressiveness and Russia getting close to China, etc. So if you look around the world, you will find that perhaps a potential uh, partner for India in strategic terms is United States. It's very clear. And uh, it came out very openly at the time of Trump. Donald Trump was very open. Mr. Pompeo shouted from the rooftops about it. Uh, and that has now kind of slowed down because uh, Biden administration has different priorities. And their uh, attitude towards China is also more nuanced. You know, it's not all opposition. And uh, we ourselves do not want to, to get dragged out into an embrace with the United States more than necessary. And therefore, this has pulled off a little bit. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the crunch, you know, then I think this will develop into a military alliance. And uh, that can be avoided only if China behaves differently, Russia behaves differently, and um, an atmosphere of cooperation emerges, and then Quad becomes a cooperative body rather than a military or ideological body. And that we can expect. Thank you very much.